For years, I put off reading Arthur C. Clarke for whatever reason, but I finally decided to go ahead and listen to my overlords and pick up an Arthur C. Clarke novel. So was it worth the wait? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Your reading overlord, Mike, is back to talk a little sci-fi classic here. This is the 1953 science fiction novel, Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. Every bit a classic, the kind of book that even if you haven't read it, you've at least heard someone talking about it one way or the other. And even if you haven't, I guarantee there's some sci-fi movie you've watched out there that put, took some influence from this and pulled from it and used it in their movie. Now, released in 1953, like I said, this is a book I think that I had heard about for years, but I always said if I read Arthur C. Clarke, I've got to start with 2001, right? Because I enjoy that movie. I think that, that would be the best place to start. It's kind of like when I talked about Asimov, and I said I got to start with Foundation, and other people were like, oh, I think maybe you should start with iRobot. So it's just it's one of those things, you, you kind of just went back and forth. Which one should you start with? Well, I decided on a whim, to go ahead and start with this one instead of 2001, just because I said, I feel like everyone on the tube has kind of reviewed 2001. Why don't we go ahead and do this one and see what happens? And I've got to say, I'm quite pleased that I picked this one. Now, conceived in the late 1940s after kind of popularizing the uh, the sci-fi travel, I forget what the book was called. There's some kind of thing I was researching on this where he wrote some kind of thing about space travel and it got really, really popular. And he said, okay, I think I can make a, 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 a decent career out of this. But uh, in 2000, 2004, this was retroactively given the Hugo Award novel for science. Well, actually, it wasn't. It was nominated for the, the science fiction, uh, or just the best novel. It lost out to Fahrenheit 451, which is a book I love by Ray Bradbury. So uh, you know, that's good company to be in. But I don't know how far back this retroactive thing is going with the Hugo Awards. They make all kinds of weird decisions these days. But I just thought that, that was kind of neat that uh, you know books that uh, are considered classics at this point before we had some of those awards, you know, hey, create some retroactive kind of things. That's a great, great idea. And uh, guys, uh, cat out of the bag here. This book absolutely deserves it. And we're going to talk about why, but let's begin, guys, as usual, with what is the book about. Now, spaceships have suddenly appeared in the skies above every city on the planet. Inside is an intellectually, technologically, and militarily superior alien race known as the Overlords. Benevolent, the Overlords made a few demands. Unify Earth, eliminate poverty, and end war. With little rebellion, humankind agreed, and a golden age began. But at what cost? With the advent of peace, man ceases to strive for creative greatness, and malaise settles over the human race. To those who resist it, it becomes evident that the overlords have an agenda of their own. As civilization approaches the crossroads, will the overlords spell the end for mankind or the dawning of a new era? And that takes us, guys, 1953. This is Childhood's End. When you get into what makes this book good or bad, the good, we're going to start with the good here because there's a lot of it. I think this book is absolutely, seriously thought provoking. It is going to stay in your head for days and months and maybe years. I don't know. It's only been a couple months for me, but it's still right here. I can't stop thinking about this book because it presents such big ideas. It asks such big, big questions that will leave you kind of thinking, hmm. You know, I've kind of, I've, I've been raised on Star Trek to think that, hey, utopian society, what could go wrong, right? And this one actually lays that out there. Yeah, utopian society seems fair and balanced and good for everyone, right? But it does come with a cost. And I feel like this was one of the first science fiction books I've ever read where it says, okay, especially think about when this was written, it says, okay, cool. We could have a utopian society. And you know what? All we're doing is creating a bunch of new problems instead of the problems that we currently have, you know? So you, you, uh, science fiction, I think they usually present U U utopia as just like this, this great and wonderful thing. It'll be a tough road for us to get there. But once we're there, it'll just be this shining bright light and there will be nothing wrong with it. And I like that this action, it's not in a jaded way either. Some people be like, oh, that's really a negative outlook. Look, science fiction as a whole has a negative outlook on humanity. It's always about how we're going to destroy ourselves or robots are going to rise up and destroy us, right? So with this, I like this idea of saying, okay, utopia seems like a, a perfect balanced society, but it does come with a cost because everything seems great on paper, right? 
but at the cost of our identity. You know, humanity will no longer struggle with, uh, you know, overcoming odds. And, and, and you know, it'll basically make us creatively bank bankrupt. We won't think of any new ideas. We won't innovate any longer. There's no struggles. There's no, no competition. All these things kind of play into us losing our culture as a race, you know, and not really being interested in anything. And some of the most shocking things that he brings up in this is like what it does to religion on the planet Earth. Because we have these great and powerful overlords, right, who have kind of made all these dreams that we thought were impossible come true. So it basically just like kills belief in any higher power because we feel like there is no power higher than the overlords, right? So that's real heartbreaking to read is all the world's religions just kind of go kaput. And you got people who are, you know, have dedicated their whole life to this and they're flinging themselves off buildings and stuff because they don't know how to deal with this. But uh, again, it's a very, very real uh, situation where it just brings up all these questions where you start being like, wow, you know, I kind of always thought, hey, you know, everybody has, you know, enough to eat. You know, there is no sickness. There's no war, things like that. These all sound really, really great. But if there's no struggle, what will humanity do to keep itself going forward? And uh, I think it uh, shows that not much, right? But uh, uh, it's a lack of competition, I think, and the struggle that really kills individual creativity and um, yeah, it's something, like I said, you'll just be thinking about for a while, but uh, at what cost would you take, you know, to have no more war, no more poverty, no more sickness, you know, what cost would you pay for that? And that is the big overlying theme of this book. But uh, the overlords are such a neat idea. I think it's because while they are benevolent, you, you always just, I think we've been trained in a modern modern world to think every time you got like an alien invasion story there are aggressors they're here to annihilate us you know that's kind of what science fiction really really fell into after this but this is a time where it's like you know sometimes maybe that they're coming here now look they got ulterior motives they're not just you know, little guardian angels they're not here just to do everything great for us for nothing they want something back in return and that is the mystery of this book what is their overall agenda? You know, there are people who are like, "Hey, they've done everything great for us." You know, if they would have, if they wanted to, because look, this book spans decades, guys. So it, it's one of those things where you're like, "Well, if they had an ulterior motive, don't you think they would have done it by now?" Ah, well, therein lies the question. So I like the idea that they're not just there to destroy us. You know, we've gotten so used to that. It's always just man versus alien. You know, spaceships and lasers and stuff. And uh, there, there's some neat stuff like that in here, but nothing like you have been trained to expect or whatever. But I love that there's like three different eras in this book. There's like a book one, two, and three, I guess you say. The book, like I said, it spans decades. So it goes over a lot of things with uh, with them coming and, and doing this and trying to figure out, you know, there is the resistance, the rebellion to it, whatever. But it's really, really small compared to everyone that's on board with this, obviously, right away. So uh, I, I like also that there's like a, a thing where they're like, okay, look, if you gotta hunt, if you gotta like hunt animals for food or something like that, okay, that's accepted. But you are not hurting each other, and you're not hurting like pets. No hurting dogs. <laughs> so it was kind of easy for me to sympathize with the overlords immediately. Like, oh, they like dogs. They're gonna take care of dogs. That's great. You know, no more animal cruelty or whatever. But uh, I love that. Like I said, three different arrows in the book, so it really gives you uh, a, just a snapshot in time of what things were like what they could be, and then what they ultimately would end up being in this situation in the eyes of Mr. Clark here. And I think it's really, really creative what he does with it. And guys, the ending of this will punch you in the heart. It is just something that you're just like, wow, that... I'm not going to be able to stop thinking about that for a while because it's... It's something. That's all I'll really say. But is it all good, guys? Of course not. There's always going to be some bad with things like this. These are subjective because I didn't find very much wrong with this book. A couple, couple of things. Look, I am a character first guy. That's very important to me. Characters really struggle in this. Besides Corellian, I think, and that's the, the lead overlord, I think that uh, most characters in this, you know, because it spans so much time and characters are coming and going in the story, you don't have a lot of time to really get connected with any of the characters or get invested or care what happens to them in the book a lot because of the way it goes through time or whatever, you're really more interested in knowing more about the overlords and what their plot is. And I think that's what really drives this here. But so if you're looking at like a really big, great character study, you probably won't get it with this book. So that might be a struggle for you if you're here for character first. But this one, it's more guys, it's about the ideas and the atmosphere and the world. Uh, some things are gonna seem dated. Just like I said, when I talked about Martian Chronicles, which I actually haven't reviewed, I just so I don't know if I should say that. But <laughs> I want to, I want to. Uh, you, um, it's, some things are gonna seem dated because it's, it was written in 1953, guys. This is, I mean, again, the big things then were the space race and the nuclear scare. 
Okay, so uh, you, that's you're always going to hear about those things. Always going to be first and foremost. And they don't. He doesn't shy away from the nuclear scare in here. In fact, you even have Corellan being like, "Yeah, you probably were just going to nuke each other before I got here." You know, and that's obviously going to be something always that's going to be books in this time period because that was the number one paranoia was that nuclear annihilation was was going to happen. I will say that the the, the biggest bad, in, in, same with Martian Chronicles, is that the certainty, the, the absolute certainty that Clark writes that man is going to annihilate itself with with nuclear weapons. You know, I mean, that's again, that was just the big thing in the 50s as all sci-fi writers could talk about was, hey, we got to go to these other planets because we're going to destroy this one. We're going to nuke we're going to nuke ourselves into oblivion. We got to get out of here and, you know, save the human race kind of thing. And it can seem kind of forced in in, in some in some points here. Uh now I'm never going to pretend this isn't something we can still talk about today. Like I said with like I am legend, these are things that we can still talk about today, but with this it, it does seem like maybe it's it's for his his personal opinion is kind of forced a little too hard and also i'll say that one thing i think is bad about this is he kept writing revised versions of the story to update it now i think this has worked like a couple of times like i think stephen king updating the stand uh, a little bit that, that 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 made more sense because it was going to be like a uncut edition of the book the full story that he wanted to put out so i was okay with him updating things a little bit but i believe two or three times arthur c clark updated this to be more current with what was going on with me it's like that's like george lucas going back and redoing star wars it's like it's great the way that it was it's a snapshot in time leave it there that gives it its charm who cares if it ages poorly it's really cool to see where people were at that time period and i think that definitely leave those alone so yes read the 1953 classic don't read the updated versions that's my opinion personally because you like to know I know it's something I wrote when I was 20, and then I wrote it again when I was 40. It would be different. So I think I would like to see what it was like when you wrote it the first time, not when you're looking back at it with a, maybe a different place in life. So there you go, guys. Why do I think that you should read it, though? I think that this is absolutely one of the pillars of science fiction, something I've been very, very big on the channel saying it's very important that we read the pillars of sci-fi and fantasy and horror. Go back and find out where all these authors that you love today got influenced from because this book influenced the genre as a whole. I can think of at least a dozen sci-fi movies off the top of my head that took ideas from this book. It is something that has been done over and over and over again and it really it popularized it in the genre. So I think that that makes it a very, very important book. So many, every alien invasion story I can think of for 20 years after this, we're taking stuff from this. But not only, guys, is this one of the best sci-fi books, I think this is one of the best books I've ever read. If I was making a top 100 list, this would make it without a doubt. I have no... Uh, there's no chance that this won't be on my top 10 for the year at the end of the year it's a book that's been stuck in my head since because of the ideas that he presented and i think it would do the same thing for you you're going to have strong opinions on it one way or the other i definitely think you guys should take the time to read it. it's not that long you'll read it in a couple of days like i did probably because it's uh it's, it's difficult to put down it's very very good it's fast paced and it will keep you wanting to know what the deal is with the overlords let's get some final thoughts here like I said, I always thought 2001 would be my first Arthur C. Clarke book. It's because, again, I mean, that's the pop culture movie, right? I mean, it was one of the biggest movies ever when it came out. And it was very impressionable. It's very much in the pop culture today. I mean, there are people still talk about how how 9000 and stuff like that. So it's just, it was something that I always thought that I would do. So I actually have that book. And I just decided to do this one just to be maybe off the cuff a little different. But now I'm like, God, what a great decision. Because I'm glad that I got to read a book I knew nothing about. I had heard of. And I never knew why people talked about it. Because I never really got into what it was about. But uh, I, I doubt that 2001 would have hit me the same way that this one did, if 2001's anything like the movie, that is. But uh, I love the questions that it brings up. I love it presents the idea of, yeah, Utopia sounds great on paper, but what about this, 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 and this? You know, these are very important things. I think the idea of a Utopia killing our sense of individualism is amazing. I think that that's something that no one ever really talks about on these things. And yeah, you probably read more sci-fi than me, then yeah, you've probably, this isn't the only person who's ever done this. I'm saying it's the first time I've experienced it in all the sci-fi that I've read. I think it's a great, great idea. Again, I grew up watching Star Trek where it was just like, yeah, it's a utopia and everything's great. You know, and that was kind of it. So I never really put too much thought into it, but I love that idea that would lose our culture and things like that. Art basically becomes like extinct 
and stuff and just because it's like there's no struggle everyone has the same advantages and it's just like again these aren't necessarily bad things we're talking about what would the fallout be over the decades during this golden age as he puts it in the book so as a species you know life without any challenges whatsoever would we find that fulfilling you know that's a very very important question that i think uh it was probably weird to be asking that in the 50s and now it's one of those things i'm like yeah that's a question i think should be asked for sure but uh, again this is stuck in my head for months guys and i don't see it going away anytime soon fantastic book an absolute classic that i almost feel embarrassed it took me this long to read that's how good it was i just talked about i am legend and how i think everyone needs to read it uh, if you are interested in the genre at all same with this guys if you're into sci-fi and you haven't read this yet deal with some of the dated stuff that's in it you're gonna love the rest of it i think you will like it quite a bit and i cannot recommend it enough this was my book of the month for september and like i said it will definitely be a top 10 book for me this year it's already one of my favorite science fiction books it's up there with dune it's up there with ender's game it's up there with hyperion i think this is an incredible incredible story that was very very influential on the genre and you owe it to yourself to check it out so guys have you read childhood's end what did you think drop in the comments and let me know and i will talk to you there